Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to look at solving by factoring. So here we go. We got your turn, number one, solving by factoring, and we've got this quadratic equation here. Before we talk about factoring, let's talk about solving. If you've got a quadratic, it makes a parabola. So maybe it looks something like this. I don't actually know exactly what it looks like. Maybe it looks something like that. And I just want to remind you that solving means figuring out where a parabola, in this case, a parabola hits the ground. So uh, where does that thing hit the ground? We are going to do that without graphing it. So last chapter, we would have just graphed it and used our graphing calculator to figure out where it hits the ground. We are today not going to do this. We're going to use factoring. So factoring in general is taking something that looks like this and turning it into a form that looks like that. So we want to get it uh, into parentheses and each one of these parentheses are called the factors. So we're going to solve, we're going to figure out where this hits the ground by making it look like that. The way, um, the way I teach it, and I think it's most common now, is to do something called an Xbox method. So we're going to make an X, and if you're following along with me, hopefully you are, you're going to be doing the same thing. So please make this in your notes as well. So make an X and make a box. The way the X box works is you take whatever the squared term is, so in this case it's 5X squared, and you put it in the top left. You take whatever the number by itself at the end is, and you put that in the bottom right corner. So negative 12 will go right here. And you take the x term, so like the 28x, and you put the x term in this spot right here. The problem we have is, is that there is only one thing with 28x, but there's two boxes. So what we need to do is we need to split this 28x up. So some of the 28x's will go here, and some of the 28x's will go here. That way we can fill up both boxes. The problem is we don't know like how many x's to put right here and how many x's to put right there. That's why we have the x. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to figure out how to split up that 28x. Here's how you do it. You take the number that's in front of the square term, and you take the number that's all by itself at the end, and you take those two numbers together, and you multiply them. 5 times negative 12 is negative 60. You take that number that's in the middle, the 28, and you just put that number at the bottom. And what that means is, is what we're looking for is two numbers that multiply to negative 60, and that at the same time will add to 28. The way I do it uh, is I start with the multiplying, and I just start looking for numbers that multiply to uh, negative 60. In fact, right now, I don't even care about the negative. I'm just looking for numbers that multiply to 60. So 60, in 60 times 1, 30 times 2, let's see, uh, 20 times 3, that would be 60. Uh, 15 times 4, what else, 10 and 6, I think I got them all. And so I've got all these combinations of numbers that multiply to 60, and what I'm doing is I'm going to start looking at all of those options, and I'm asking myself, are any of those options, could they be 28 apart? No. Actually, the 30 and the 2 could, couldn't they? If I did 30 minus 2, that could be 28. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, negative in front of the 2, because 30 minus 2 is 28, and 30 times negative 2 is negative 60. There's my winner. And remember why we did that. We had to split up this 28 x's. So some of the x's will go here, some of them will go there. And now we know that 30 of the x's will go into one of the boxes, and negative 2x's will go in the other box. And it didn't matter. If I put the 30x right here and the negative 2x right there, that would have been just as good. All right, so next step. I need to take a look at, let's say, these two things right here, and I need to ask myself, what could get pulled out of each one or factored out? Uh, each of them have an x in it. 
And each of these numbers could be divided by five as well. So I could pull out a five x. The next thing I ask myself is what would I have to multiply five x by to turn it back into five x squared? Uh, hopefully you would agree that if I times 5x by x, that would be 5x squared. So 5x times x is 5x squared. What would I have to times 5x by to turn it into 30x? Uh, 6. 5x times 6 is 30x. What would I have to times x by to turn it back into negative 2x? I have to times it by negative 2. So that will go by go right there. And then the last question I ask myself is, if I times negative 2 and 6 together, does that turn back into negative 12? The answer is yes. So I did it right. Okay, so my factors are 5x minus 2 and x plus 6. All right. Now it says to solve by factoring. What I've just done is I have factored. I did this so far. This is the factored form. But I haven't solved yet. Solving, remember, from last chapter, is when we say where the parabola hits the ground. So now we can use this to figure out where our parabola hits the ground. So I want to know when this factor hits the ground. So 5s minus 2, when does that factor hit the ground. Let's find out. Plus 2, plus 2, 5x equals 2, divided by 5. This parabola hits the ground at 2 fifths. And this will also tell us the other place where it hits the ground. So x plus 6 hits the ground at negative 6. So now I know where this parabola hits the ground. It doesn't look so much like that. It actually is at, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It hits the ground at negative 6 and at 2 fifths, that's like 0.4. It actually looks a little bit more like that. All right. Uh, but by the way, I was just doing that to give you a, a visual. You don't actually have to do any of that. The answer to the question is negative 6 and 2 fifths. We have solved by factoring. Good job.